so I'm going to hand over to Richard now um, and really looking forward to spending about an hour now with the brothers um, finding out what they've been up to. Thanks very much Richard. Thank you ever so much Katie and uh, it's been a huge joy for me personally to have the brothers here for Holy Week and Easter. It's been wonderful but we'd like to begin as the brothers always begin and keep on reminding us with prayer because um, seven times a day as you know uh, prayer punctuates the life of the Melanesian Brotherhood and we've been saving our office uh, to say with you at the beginning of this session so head brother is going to lead us in prayer i will give you thanks the lord with my whole heart i will tell of your wonderful works glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and always shall be forever and ever amen Almighty Father, I yield to thee. Almighty Father, I yield to thee. To all your creatures, power to live. God of the earth, as you are with your great glory, may be seen. We bring to you, with you began, what we so far this day have done. Forgive me sinful thoughts and hearts, and everything our service marked. Whatever good our deeds have shown, the rightful praise is yours alone. To you be glory with the Son and Holy Spirit ever Praise the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Praise him. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, the name of the Lord shall be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the skies. Who is like the Lord our God, who sit is so high, that he looks down on the sky and the world. He lifts the weak out of the dust, and raises the man who is nothing from the rubbish heap, to make him see with the great, the great man of his people. He sets the woman with no children in the home as the happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and always shall be, forever and ever. Amen. Now to him who is unable to do far more than all we ask of him, by his power at work in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time, forever and ever. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Those who know your name may trust you. Those, those who, who know your name, name may trust you. For you, Lord, always help those who look to you. And put their trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Those, those who, who know your, your name, name may trust, trust you. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. Let us pray, O Lord. And we, we pray, pray to grant us the spirit, spirit to think and do always those things that are right that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may be able to live as you wish through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's place the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, uh, Head Brother, for leading us. And as you know, um, one of the wonderful things about the brothers being here has been prayer. And in my house, I have a, a um, Tibetan um, a bowl, which is called a singing bowl. So at six o'clock in the morning, every morning they've been here, the bell has been rung and we've all been getting up to say our morning office, which has been absolutely wonderful for me. And then going across to pray with everyone in church. So that's been 
a real highlight for me. But I want to ask the brothers a little bit about their trip to the United Kingdom and some of the things that they've done. Now, first of all, there was a very long journey. How did you feel on the journey, elder brother? Well, since I heard from uh, the chief secretary, brother Nelson, and uh, the head brother, brother Christine, for a trip to England, uh, I was not thinking for joining the 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 team with head brother to England because it's very too much for me. While I'm thinking of myself that I'm not uh, well, good, well in educated, <laughs> yeah, to speak the language of uh, English people, but uh, uh, really. Uh, I enjoy to be part with the head brother in that mission. And you've um, you've never been out to Solomon's before, have you? Well, uh, yeah, uh, it's very very uh, interesting. That is my first time uh, that uh, to going out from uh, Solomon. So you yeah. arrived you, after that very long journey, 20, 23 or twenty four hours on an aeroplane. You arrived in London. How were you feeling when you came out through the exit in, in London, into London Airport? What did it feel like to be here in this country on the other side of the world? Well, on the journey, uh, yeah, I was thinking what will be happen the next, because I'm not feeling very exciting yet, because uh, I'm not... Uh, see what will happen next. So you're a bit nervous. It's, yeah, a little bit nervous. <laughs> and uh, when we at uh, London, uh, in the terminal, we uh, on the way to the way out, uh, I was thinking and hoping to see uh, Father Richard Carter, the <laughs> former chaplain of the Melanesian Brotherhood Worldwide. And uh, uh, I was thinking, uh, where could I see this man? Uh, and now uh, I'm not really yet still uh, nervous still within me. And when we come to the way out and see people standing, there are lots of people uh, between them. And I see the former chief chaplain of the Melanesian Brotherhood, who took Father Richard, was standing. And so my nervous was totally uh, washed out. <laughs> I feel uh, I feel at home when I see Richard was standing and I smiling. To I certainly felt at <laughs> home. And then we went back. Your first time to go on an underground train. What was that like, head brother? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was very glad <laughs> and I really enjoyed because uh, when I in Australia, I just went to the uh, my friends and I heard about the story about UK. That's the train was underground, so I hope one day, and I pray that I would go in the train, that train. And the request from you companions from UK, so it's very great. And we come over and Father Richard see us there and welcome us. And I expect what transport will be traveled to, to Richard's house. And he said, we'll go on board the train. I can say, oh, we will board a under train now. So. It's great. I love it. I really enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> and here you are in the centre of, of London, looking out on Trafalgar Square. And every day I could see her brother going to the window. What were you looking out for? <laughs> <laughs> because I heard uh, England was uh, full of snow because it stayed in the other part of the world. You can see it. Uh, and when I open the window, because I expect to see snow, but it's like it's... I never see snow. You uh, never see yeah, snow, yeah, but maybe yeah. next time we yeah. can bring you across Hopefully the snow. Hopefully you will bring me next time when snow is ready. <laughs> <laughs> but they've been very, very, very active. Now the first place, I mean, they, they came here and we had a gathering of companions um, at, at St. Martin's, a really, really lovely day. We decided to make it like a Melanesian gathering to have a service in the church and um, um, the son of, of Bishop uh, Mark Ryland, Sam, 
Rylands, who's been out to the Solomon Islands. He was what he was the one who was got sort of uh, stuck in the Solomon Islands during the pandemic, but he loved being with the brothers. And um, we asked him to preach, and he preached really beautiful sermon, and the brothers sang. Yes. Yeah, I think we ought to just sing a song here just to make people feel that they're in Solomon Islands. How about um, you meet everyone along here? Yeah. Okay, Let's, see. let's go. You, you know stuff. <laughs> you meet everyone along here. You meet everyone along here. Jesus loving you me. You meet everyone along here. Jesus loving you me. Go forward, go, go forward, go, go forward, go, go forward, go, go forward, go along, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, be ready, ready to go along, heaven. Brothers and sisters, be ready, ready to go along, heaven. Go forward, go, go forward, go, go forward, go, go forward, go, go forward, go along, Jesus. So singing is very important, as we know, in the Solomon Islands, but so is food. And so when the companions came here, we decided to make them a so lots to eat, and you've been helping me cook in my kitchen a lot too. Not only um, uh, the companions, but also the following day, you helped me prepare food for people who are homeless from all over the world. Can you tell us about the international group and your work with homeless people here at St. Martin's? I really enjoy it uh, here working with the St. Martin in the fields with the international group. Is uh, feeding lots of people who are homeless and it's great and lovely. Uh, I really enjoy seeing them and hope and pray that this is a, a way forward for the church of the Melons in Solomon Island to look forward in the, min, in the missions and ministry which the brothers are mostly in missions so that can the church prepare for this if this happen because a oh, lot of things happening now in Solomon Island so it's it's a great work which the St. Martin in the Fields example and all other churches which we are being with, uh, it's great. I really love it. So one of the things we've tried to establish here is a sense of even among homeless people of community and real care, not just, you know, some people giving and other people's receiving, but a, a sense of community with people who are um, um, destitute from all parts of the world. We have people from the Middle East, we have people from Syria, Iraq, we have people from Afghanistan. We have someone working with the brothers all week who's from Iraq, wonderful man who's been in the drama with them. People, many people from Africa and from um, Asia. How did you feel, elder brother, to see in a rich city like this, one of the richest cities in the world, so many people who are destitute? Well, uh, when I, I see the homeless people uh, here in England, where in the a rich uh, country. Uh, when I see homeless people, I was feel very sorry for them uh, because they have faced that life, yeah, in that life they face difficulties. But here I see what the Saint Martin is doing for the national, these national groups where the homeless are from all parts of the world. It's very interesting and enjoying that it's the grace of God how they share things with those people uh, in uh, St. Martin's field. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it's a very good thing that uh, Father Richard with his group are doing for the homeless people here in St. Martin's field. Well, one of the companions watching today is Sarah. Um um, Crompton, she was one of the ones who started that work, and it's um, it's really a give and a take, and it's actually based on the community life of Melanesia, because I really wanted to start a group which wasn't just rich people giving to poor people, but was a sense of community and belonging. And I think one of the great things we can learn from Melanesia is actually the importance of community. And other things that you've done here is a lot of contemplative prayer with the Nazareth community. And again, it's something I learned from the Melanesian brothers, the importance of silence early in the morning 
and, and coming silently before and that sense of reverence. And head brother has been serving. And the reason I got him to serve here in the church is he serves so beautifully, but he serves with such reverence. And I wanted the, I wanted my parishioners to see, you know, like when you serve with reverence, it brings a kind of real awe and a real stillness to, to the Eucharist and to, and to the uh, worship of the church. How has it felt for you being part of that contemplative life, Head Brother, and also serving and taking part? He took part in all the Easter services. <clears throat> it's great for me, and, and I'm not expecting this from Father who brings me all these things, which I'm really nervous about this, but I have been saving, and a lot of my life was saving in Solomon Island. For, and when I, Father Richards told me to save with him, I really place an um, honor them. And also joining the the service and also the meditations, I really enjoy it. Which uh, a lot of us should be need this in our in our business. Uh, it's a time of silence which we can speak with God in our times. And it's a day which we can uh, we, which God can direct us in our works and ministry. And I think that you know one of the things again that I've learned from Melanesia is that that actually silent prayer is quite hard when you're by yourself. But when you learn to contemplate or pray silently, but together as a community, it's very strong, isn't it? Yes, that's very true. It's, it's togetherness is, is a community uh, meditation. It's great because you have everyone there and every, they connect together in the meditations and spring unity. It's, it's a great, great yeah. experience. So if anyone wants to see one of the meditations that, uh, her brother has done. Last Saturday, we went for a, a walking meditation uh, around uh, the Serpentine Hyde Park. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he's he's had about two thousand people watching him as he's talking uh, about uh, about prayer and about life. So so there's an example of 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 how much people in this country and across the world are interested to hear. Well, from St Martin's, they got on the train after the companion gathering, which was such a lovely event, and they went up to Chester. Can you tell us about Chester? Yeah, we went to Chester. It's, it's uh, great. It's, it's lovely in Chester because uh, we have Chester Rest House in Solomon Island. It's great. It's through the support of the companions of the UK that's, um, and the Chester, which also Chester Rest House in Solomon Island, which is owned by brothers and yeah, it's really owned by brothers. And that helps yeah. finance the yeah, communities, as well. So, uh, we went there and really enjoyed because we also visited some of the schools and also the churches, which also doing the same things, same thing the schools have done. It's great. Yeah. And, so, and so, who did you stay with in Festa? We stayed with Compton and Sabra, and we also stayed with Bishop Mark uh, in uh, Chester. Was it nice seeing Barbara again? She knows the Brotherhood well, doesn't she? Uh, <laughs> yes, Barbara is. When we arrive with, uh, in the house of Barbara, is, we, she will fill at home. And it's great. And in your love. Uh, did, did she try and make you support Liverpool football team? <laughs> 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 we also uh, make you, which team you belong, all the brothers make you. So we cannot say, oh, this, this, it's everyone. Uh, Liverpool. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, and then Bishop Mark took you on a, a tour of the diocese, um, the Chester Bishop and Bishop Sam. Yeah, yeah we when we been with uh, Bishop Mark, uh, we really enjoy it because we go and visit some of the schools and also churches, and and the students ask us about the climate changes and what the life the religious so is, and it's great and very. Just say the climate change in Solomon Island is very difficult because people lost their homes, and that is the answer. And also, maybe you have the great answers which is can help. And the people in Solomon Islands, it's hope. Uh, those students which ask us questions, maybe. They're so, very concerned. Yeah, Young yeah, people yeah, here yeah, are very concerned yeah, about the environment. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? Is it a really big problem in the Solomon Islands? We hear a lot about the Pacific and the rising sea levels. Elder brother, have you noticed the, the dangers? Yes, uh, uh, in Solomon Islands, it's become a big problem for uh, our people in Solomon Islands because 
somehow they have lost all their belongings because the islands have washed away. Uh, sometimes you drain and the rain was the gardens. So a very big problem that affected uh, climate change in Solomon Island. And one of the good things is later on, we're jumping a bit, but you met Marie, didn't you, who's, who's, who's going to be out in the Solomon Islands doing these yes, yes, um, yes. Um, climate change <laughs> projects. And the brothers are going to become more involved, is that right? Yes, uh, she told us that he will come to Solomon Island and he will be spending maybe two days in the Batson Theological College to teach the, uh, the priest uh, how to read the meters and also he will spend maybe one day with the brothers and I. Uh, really invite him so that she, when she, she she come over so that he can teach the novices so that when the novices go out for their practicals uh, he they can teach the people to love the environment rather than hating them and because the environment is so important and and you've started i um, might you've just started a big project to clear up honiara right here yes that's great it's <clears throat> it's about uh, cleaning the town of honiara and the brothers and companions and the novices really enjoy it, and also Christians. They see brothers coming and clean all the rubbish is in all the, the town. plastic so and the rubbish that's clogging, clogging up the rivers and the beaches. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it's right. The Archbishop was also announcing to the church melons and that all Christians must come out and clean the town. So it's great. It's so the brothers have set an example for the whole city. Really. Yeah. Anyway, we're back to our tour. They've, they've uh, stayed in Chester, and then um, this is we're glossing over a lot of the things they did. But now we're on from um, Chester Diocese, which has been such a, a great partner to, to MMUK. You met the mighty um, John there. Yeah, I think he's on, on board. Yeah, John Freeman. That's how uh, uh, another, great man. another yeah. great companion, yes. but many great, great companions yes. interested. Then great you man. went on to uh, Bath and Wells. Can you tell about who, what, what you did in Bath and Wells? Uh, we, uh, Reverend uh, Jackie, bring us to Bath and Wells, and we stayed with uh, uh, Cook and his wife. It's great. It's lovely accommodation there, and we went and visit the. Barton Wells Cathedrals, and it's a lot of history we see in the church, and uh, and we also hear about them about the all the screens which destroyed by the world, and and one of his sons who has built that altar, uh, he put it back, and it's a lot of people see that it's when you see this uh, screen, it's it's reminding us that uh, he can bring everybody together because the screen was. Uh, pieces and they build it again and so yeah, put it so back it together again. Yeah. So it's a kind of parable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Right. Then you travelled on from from um, um, from staying there in Bath and Wells. You travelled on down to our other close linked di closely linked diocese, Exeter. Yes, when we stay in Bath and Wells, uh, Katie Drew come over and bring us to Exeter, and uh, we went have a service in Saint Mary. Yeah? And yeah. it's really enjoyable meeting uh, Reverend uh, John. He's uh, a great man there. Uh, and the companions welcoming us in Exeter. And, and we are accommodated by uh, Reverend uh, Martin and with his family. And That's that yeah, nice. yeah, it's mm -hmm. great. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for him. And also, we visit uh, the little children there and they ask us about the climate change. So all of our touring was about the climate change. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So uh, I'm really happy about the young people concerning about the people. They're in really Solomon. worried, aren't they? Yeah, yes. They're very worried. So I really thank them. I hope that they will help us a lot. But what was it like being in the diocese of Bishop John Coleridge Patterson? Because I know you visited some of the places which are associated with him. Uh, this is a, a, a great pioneer for the Solomon Island, which uh, Bishop Patterson brings to Christianity to Solomon Island, which also uh, min ministry by the brothers, which are now growing by come. And we hope and pray, and because we also have the pilgrimage in Tabale, which is by our founder in Popuri. And when we see in this uh, program, I see Patson, uh, Patson Bishop Patson pilgrimage. pilgrimage. Yeah. 
and I hope to look into it. And we really enjoy it. With you did the whole pilgrimage. Yes, didn't you? yeah, yeah. We really enjoy it. And, and, and I heard um, <coughs> Brother Clark, the guardian of yeah. Hillfield Friary, with two yeah. African. Um, uh, Priory were also there, so we really enjoy with all of them and all the companions and stuff with us. We really enjoy it for this uh, pilgrimage, and it's great. I really love it. I will never forget it because I really yeah, but you walked it. a long way. And, yeah. and, 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 and Harry, you had some problems with your shoes because Harry <laughs> is not used to wearing shoes because he's got he's, he's, a, he's a, a, a man who has great simplicity in the Solomon Islands. And um, we couldn't find really shoes that were wide enough to fit your feet, could we? <laughs> and so what happened in that long pilgrimage? Well, uh, yes, uh, gave, uh, gave me some uh, yeah, boots and then I wore it. And then when we at the... Uh, St. Andrew can teach. Yes, yeah, St. Andrew. St. Andrew. Uh, Bishop Mack, Bishop Mack uh, bring some also a uh, pair of shoes then I put on my leg uh, and it felt comfortable on the journey that we make but not not really but I managed <laughs> to uh, make uh, the, the journey with the uh, all our friends and companions. Well done. Yeah, well done. and I enjoyed it. And he was wearing, though, yeah. there you are, they yeah. were wearing the bishop's yeah. shoes, so you're <laughs> even more holy. So, so uh, the journey has yeah. to be like that. Yeah. We yeah. have to suffer for it. They're like yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. 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 With the, all our companions, I uh, enjoyed with the, all of them. Yeah. 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 And, and one of the unsung heroes of our mission in the UK is a woman called Katie Drew. And can you say a bit about her? I really think uh, Katie Drew because he's, uh, she. she is very impressive by bringing the brothers here, I think, through his idea and because of uh, the missionary which we done and also the missions ministry which brothers and companions working together. I uh, really thank her for the, the work she done. For Time the brothers is organizing. And, yeah, organizing everything and I hope uh, she will bring me more any time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the wonderful trip to Exeter with lots of other things that we, we probably haven't got time to mention them all, but they, they came back buzzing with, from their time um, touring around the country. And then they came back and they stayed um, with um, Sam Rylands, Father Sam Rylands in Chelsea. So they're from you know, a very sort of beautiful part of London. And um, you met his son, Josh. Josh, yeah. What was he like? He's a lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> he also uh, called Father Richard the brother. Where is Brother Richard? And, this is uh, little and Joshua. This is Joshua. So, yeah. uh, uh, very love and enjoy. And during our uh, back to Ch Chelsea and during the prayer in the evening, we have a service and they invite Father Richards to speak, uh, talk about the true way of service, and we really enjoyed We had loads of people, really, they had the biggest turn up they'd have for the whole of Lent for this talk to hear me and the brothers, and they prepared a huge meal for everybody. It was a really lovely evening with lots of interesting questions about prayer and about life and about service and about trying to incarnate our ministry to make it not just words, but actions. And it was a really good evening. And I think, and you went bowling with the youth group? Yes, we also went bowling, and I come second. You are the champion <laughs> bowler. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you visited lots of schools again in Chelsea. Yeah. 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 And the, the kids liked it. Yeah, the kids liked it, and I uh, really enjoyed it the kids, and they, we sang a lot of things for and, them. And the little children asked lots of questions. Yes, they also asked about the climate change. <laughs> <laughs> They've been well yeah, taught, yeah, you see, in yeah, this country. Yeah. The children are leading the way on yeah, climate yeah, change. They really yeah. are. They're leading the way. It's the adults, who are, it's the politicians who are taking a while to come round. Anyway, um, after Chelsea, you came back to um, uh, St. Martin in the Fields, and it was time um, for a really um, special time here. We went to um, Cambridge, which was a really lovely day. Can you tell us about the day in Cambridge? Uh, we are 
<clears throat> thanks so much for Father Mark Donald for inviting us and Father Richards to and in the Cambridge and also visit his uh, uh, university there in Cambridge. And we really enjoyed with Father uh, McDonald. It's great, and he's a great man, and a lot of uh, people know about him. And uh, we are so pleased to sit in the chair of Bishop. Uh, Bishop Selwyn. Bishop Selwyn, it's great. And also we the see- The chaplain of Selwyn yeah. College also gave us a wonderful uh, tour of yes. Selwyn College. She really, really made us feel so very welcome. Right there. And I'm, one of the highlights for me was actually the altar in seeing, what did we see? The cross of Bishop Patshon uh, during his mission, he wore the cross, it's, yeah. Which is in, yeah. inset into the altar in, in, in Selwyn College there. So that was it. And then they took us to the, 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 the dining hall. We, we heard we were going to a, for, a, for a lunch, but we didn't realize we would be invited into the main hall for a, for a wonderful lunch, wasn't it? Yes, it's wonderful, really lovely. And then from Selwyn College to Corpus Christi, and then and then to uh, where we also met the chaplain of Corpus Christi, who wants to make a, a link with the brothers, and then on to King's College. So a very wonderful day, and Brian MacDonald had really planned that um, so that we, we learnt a lot. Yes, we learn a lot of uh, things which is in the Cambridge because we heard about Cambridge, but thank you so much, uh, Father MacDonald, for, yeah. Uh, and, and to see the archives, the, the handwritten letters that um, Bishop, um, <laughs> see he's caught a cold here. And he, yeah, they've been cold again. <laughs> he, um, it, all the handwritten letters of Bishop Patterson, written in his own hand with the most beautiful drawings, because in those days they didn't have mobile phones, they used to draw everything. What, what yes, did you think of those letters? It's, they are very good in artists, they are drawing and they are really, uh, you can see us, they take, taking photos, it's great. I really really like beautiful yeah. drawings by, by Patterson of, of every island and the people and the things he was doing. So that was a great day. And then we had the most huge day here because we had uh, the London, Mar uh, London Marathon was taking place and we crossed the London Marathon with a donkey and then came into the church and uh, we had a passion drama, which again you can see online because it's, uh, it's very good. Uh, elder brother, can you tell us what part the head brother played? Yes, uh, head brother played the part of the beloved disciple of Jesus, uh, yeah. uh, John. Yes, mm -hmm. and you were a disciple as well. And also I was a disciple as well. And you carried the body of yeah. Jesus and placed and it we, on the altar. The disciples carried the body of Jesus uh, as well with, uh, to the uh, entrance of the chapel, just and like to go and bury him. My, yeah. And how did you find it, being in part of that? Yes, uh, I've been with uh, Richard Carter playing drama in Solomon Islands, and uh, the very interesting part always, uh, Father Richard always gave me to place the, the Pharisees. Uh, 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 yeah, that's a very interesting part because there are people who, who, who try to uh, accuse Jesus, yeah? Uh, but this uh, time I didn't give you the first, I gave you the <laughs> disciple of Jesus. Now, uh, I was thanking Father for giving me to be part of the disciples <laughs> in uh, St. Martin's Union on the drama. Thank yeah. you, Father. And, and it was a moving yeah. drama. A very enjoyable and very powerful drama that most of the people, I see them, they cry and uh, they look uh, very yeah, beautiful. sorrowful about the drama. Yeah. And then we went through Holy Week. We had services every day. Um, Monday, Thursday, the head brother helped um, with the Eucharist, and we had the, the vigil right through till 10 at night. On Good Friday, you came to the three hours where Malcolm Geit, again, you can watch this, Malcolm Geit came and preached. And what, How did you find that? It's really enjoyable, um, and it's timing, the... the 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 service was really timing when it's three o'clock the time the service was ended and I really enjoy uh, the service and also the service which uh, Father preached to us about uh, the sermon and also the last part which say, he said that 
uh, Saturday is Holy Saturday. It's keep on breathing. They say it's the breathing. breathing. Breathe in and out. So it's Jesus breathed out. He gave his full life. So it reminds me that I must give my full life to Jesus. Yes. And then um, the, the Saturday, I was just so thankful to both of them because this is one of the busiest days of the year here. We began at seven in the morning. And I think I finished at midnight and then we were up again at four for the vigil. So it was a big day. And during that day, um, um, we did the meditation by the by the serpentine, came back here. You came into the church and what was the jobs? We prepared the church for the Easter day, uh, With, flowers, and also we were shopping. And, and cleaning, cleaning all, all the silver. The silver uh, with the equipment for the uh, service and also prepare the dining hall sprayed. Uh, and we, we prepared food for um, for Easter breakfast, breakfast for about 140 people. So they helped me with all the shopping. They helped me with all the cooking. And then we went across and set up the church. And then um, head brother was the, the server and distributed the chalice in the in the um, uh, in the Easter services. and. Uh, it was very special and elder brother was very supportive as well and then we came out and we again cooked for all the homeless people for on on easter day and if that wasn't enough we got on the train and went down to visit my family so they had a full day and they are now looking a bit exhausted but i am feeling very blessed by having them here because with a great deal of simplicity humility and grace they have really been a presence of Christ among us for this last uh, week and a half and I'm very grateful. Now many of you will be saying um, are the brothers going to come here and set up a household and we've been thinking about this very very deeply and I'd just like to ask that question what is your feeling after going around United Kingdom about this idea of setting up a household in United Kingdom? Uh, this was very uh, impressive and great, uh, but we all of us have to pray about uh, because uh, you have to see the needs which the brothers will come and stay here uh, because we cannot send the brothers just to send the brothers and they just come and if it's your need and you see which is so important for them to come and work with you here and also uh, just a month or uh, six months uh, rather than uh, years and also we have to be careful because I don't want to send the brothers and you just see them just come and sleeping and just waste a lot of time rather than yeah so it's 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 your uh, uh, time to see which is the important to see yeah. uh, the brothers can do uh, with you when they uh, set up a household here, which is you will set up. So in, in Solomon's, we've been talking about, there's the idea of what's called a mobile household. What yes. does, What is a mobile household? A mobile household is, is the brothers can come and stay and also go by. It's not a uh, permanent. permanent. It's, it's a household which the brothers can leave and they do the missions around and they come and... In, yeah, by. and what, what struck me is because um, head, head brother had an experience himself of going to Australia where they were put in a parish and they were basically left in a parish and you felt that that was not a good use of the brothers in yeah, some that, way. Yeah, that's not a good use. Yeah. Why? Uh, because you cannot leave the brothers because uh, it is you who know about the cultures and the cities and which is in your place. It is not the brothers so you come. Uh, so the best thing the brothers can do is to come to visit yeah, from place, place to place, to place and, yeah. and to be an example to yes. us. Would you say that was true? Yes, and, and you can teach them uh, the, the things which is uh, for the brothers because it's very hard here because a lot of, uh, uh, I say, the government also involved in everything, uh, the rights. Is, yeah. Yeah, so that is a yeah, very difficult thing. So, so what what has come clear to us is the way... And I think the way just having two brothers with us has really injected a whole new energy into the companions, to our worship and into the way of service has really inspired the people to whom you've gone. And 
what we'd like to suggest to the Melanesian mission to discuss about is making this a much more regular thing rather than waiting another eight years before it happens again but actually saying we'd like maybe the brothers to come for three months every two years or something like that and then make it on a, a rolling thing where they can visit all the places all the connections reignite the interest in the schools in the churches in the among the companions of the Melanesian Brotherhood and then um, uh, um, go back and this is using the brothers for what they're best at which is bringing together community rather than just sort of leaving them marooned in a house um, on, on where, where, where they may feel a bit kind of lost. Yes, uh, that's true and I really hope with the brothers uh, coming here because a lot of you have been experienced the life of brothers and I can see that you can help them because I see a lot of you can help brothers here because through uh, the experience you have uh, here in UK and also in Solomon Islands you can help them. This is the way world forward for the brothers when we uh, need the brothers when they come here. Yeah, so, uh, so well, this is typical Melanesian brothers um, humility saying that that we can help you but actually you don't realize that you help us a lot because um, I mean, everyone at St. Martin's has said, just having you praying with us every day, being quietly, humbly part of every service, not missing anything, praying morning, uh, coming to the daily communion, that has really strengthened people here just by having your presence. So, so that really has, has been a great encouragement to us too. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but yes, it's great. And, and online, yes. you can see all their services online that they've taken part in. Cool, that's a, a, a whirlwind tour of our, our time here. There's lots of other things that we've missed out. We've had a wonderful Chinese meal with the Tou family who mm -hmm. took us um, the, uh, the most exotic Chinese food imaginable. Um, what else? We've uh, been for many walks. We've uh, been up to uh, oh, we've been to um, um, St Paul's Cathedral for the for the blessing of of the priests as the priests renewed their vows on Monday Thursday. Um, it's been a great time. Any questions? Over to Katie. I hope we've given you a flavour of their time here in England. Thank you, Richard. Um, just before we throw over to some questions, would, would the brothers like to share news of some big anniversaries and events coming up over the next couple of years? Yes, thank you, Kate. Uh, this year will be uh, the brothers and companions will have the great conference, which is on, uh, beginning on 14 uh, October. Uh, this is the beginning of the retreat and on world. Uh, that is the uh, 15 great conference uh, of the Melanesian Brotherhood and Companions and also supporters which we held in headquarter at Tabalia uh, this year and also uh, this year will also the blessing of the monuments of 20 anniversary of the Seven Mothers Brothers which we held in Weather Coast in Warabao Village uh, it will happen at the St. Mark this year and uh, that's well, the 24th uh, of April, so yeah, that's yeah, coming up very soon. soon yeah. And Katie has sent round some prayers, and if we can all pray, especially on that 24th, because yeah. that's a, a very big date. Yeah. So we will send you a date which will confirm, we'll send you a date which the brothers will go to the other side in weather coast. And, and we also have the great uh, the centenary of the Melanson Brother and Companions in 2025, which is a great event for so looking forward to for hope to see a lot of you will come over to Solomon Islands and be part with the brothers uh, in in the celebration, which is the brothers and companions uh, working together. So hopefully, uh, pray and work together, especially for the preparation for this coming uh, centenary of the Melanesian Brotherhood and Companions. Founded by any corporate in 1925. Oh, great, thank you. I've, I've just stopped spotlighting you so I can just pick up. If anybody wants to, to raise their hands for a question or unmute yourself, please do for the brothers. 
And your flight's back home tomorrow? Yes, we will fly uh, tomorrow and we'll miss the UK companions and all several people we meet and also everyone here. We hope and pray uh, that we'll go back to the brothers and tell about what's happening here. It's very enjoyable to ministry and work for the brothers. Great. Okay, any questions from people? Yes, Brian. Do you want to unmute yourself, Brian? Thank you. I was interested to hear about your visit to Australia, Augustine. What did you do in Australia? Did you visit the brothers in the Torres Strait or did you go somewhere else or what did you do? Did you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Father Brian. Uh, when we in Australia to open the household in Melbourne, in Sepaton, the Vangara crisis, it's a new uh, household there. And it's very difficult and it's interesting. Uh, what uh, was really interesting is because the brothers were not there, and uh, hopefully that we will working well. But the other way, they just leave us in that house, and uh, it's very difficult when somebody who do not know about the brothers and just leave us and they go. It's very difficult. But if they know about the brothers, the mission and ministry. It's, I think it's very important. Yeah. So the mission in Australia in the Torres Straits and in the Northern Territories is working very well. Yeah. It's working really well. It was just that example of just being in a parish without much link with, with, with their knowledge of, of the way they work and the mission that they do. In the Torres Strait Islands, among the, um, um, the communities there, the work has been going really well, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, because they already know. Uh, maybe you, Father Brian, already know the brothers were in in the Torres Strait, so you will know them. Yes. When the brothers go there, they are working very well. Good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Any more questions there? What What would you like us to be praying for, particularly for for the brotherhood at, at this time? Uh, maybe uh, I hope that you will, you will pray for this great conference and also uh, the preparation for the 100 years and also pray for everyone so that we can work together in hand in our prayer so that everyone have the strength and especially the new leaders for uh, taking us to the uh, 100 years. And how many brothers and novices are there at the moment? Uh, in the headquarter, we just have 28 brothers and uh, 80 novices. In the whole of the brotherhood? In the whole of the brotherhood, we have uh, 300 plus brothers. Thank you. <laughs> and well, Reverend Lydia and I are very much looking forward to our, our visit to you in, in May. And um, as, as I said to head brother Harry, he, he has the blisters from the walking boots. We will have the blisters from walking over the coral to get to chapel. <laughs> <laughs> when do you go, Katie, if I'm asked? Uh, the night of the coronation. Good heavens. An easy one to remember. And um, I've, I've had an email exchange with David Vinagi, so he will actually be attending the coronation as the Governor General. Um, so look, look out for him on the on the television. Yes. Any questions before I ask the brothers and Richard to close us in prayer? It's been so lovely to hear all you've been doing. I mean, you've. I hope it's been a, a joyful time for you. We've, it's been such an honour to host you in these different dioceses. And, and like Richard said, it's everybody that you've met has been absolutely delighted. And the children have been so eager with their questions. Um, they really enjoyed And we know it's incredibly hard work, particularly in this cold weather. But we are very, very grateful. And we have learned so much from you both. So thank you. It's, it's lovely to see John <coughs> Rawlings there as well, because uh, his hosting of, of um, Brother Leonard and Brother George Ello. Brother George Ello, um, obviously, who's now passed away, was, was a wonderful brother and uh, and the, uh, then became the mission's uh, secretary. And now Leonard, who was um, 
just a humble brother in those days is now the archbishop and still has such love for for Exeter, for Chester, and for the companions here. And they've done, they've been real examples of, of service. So I think this link is two ways. It's not one way. It's a really, really reciprocal. And what we invest in the brothers is is a hundred foot comes back a hundredfold, and what they invest in us it also um, um, yields a hundredfold. Thank you. Right, I don't think there's any more questions. We end with a song. Thank you. Jesus, you are lemon blow me. Jesus, you hold him and blow me, you take him and blow me, and make me cry out for you. Me no find any good something, no this well I will make me cry out for you. Ooh, Jesus, me come long, you know, you take me this time. Oh. Time Jesus me come long, you know, you take me this time. Papa, me talk, thank you long you for sending son long you for thy for sins long day. Was where you were ready for him, Papa, me come in two time more. Oh, Jesus, me come long, you know, you take me this time. Time, Jesus, me come long, you know, you take me this time.